enthusiasts. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to explore the top eight remote sensing indices you need to know to elevate your analysis of Earth's surface. These indices help us interpret satellite data, monitor vegetation, water bodies, urban areas, and even post-fire recovery. Let's dive in. First up, we have the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, or NDVI, one of the most commonly used indices. 1. Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, NDVI. Formula. Normalized Difference Vegetation Index equals near-infrared minus red, divided by near-infrared plus red NDVI measures. Vegetation health by comparing the reflectance in the near-infrared, NIR, and red bands. Healthy vegetation reflects more near-infrared light and absorbs red light. Range, negative one to one, with higher values indicating healthier vegetation. NDVI is widely used in agricultural monitoring, forestry, and land cover classification. When vegetation is healthy, it absorbs more visible light, red, and reflects more near-infrared light. NDVI helps quantify this difference providing critical insights into plant health and biomass. Next is an index perfect for monitoring water resources. Two, normalized difference. Water index, NDWI. Normalized difference. Water index equals near infrared minus short wave infrared divided by near infrared plus short wave infrared. The NDWI identifies water bodies by using the difference between near infrared NIR, and shortwave infrared, SWIR light. Water absorbs near-infrared and reflects SWIR, so areas with water show strong contrast. NDWI is crucial for water resource management, flood monitoring, and even wetland mapping. It's a reliable tool for separating water from surrounding land and vegetation, making it easier to track changes in water bodies over time, such as during droughts or floods. Now, what happens when you're analyzing areas with sparse vegetation and lots of exposed soil? The third one is Soil Adjusted Vegetation Index, SAVI. Soil Adjusted Vegetation Index equals near infrared minus red band, divided by near infrared plus red plus L times one plus L. The SAVI is designed to reduce the impact of soil brightness on vegetation analysis. This is especially useful in areas with less dense vegetation like grasslands or dry savannas. L-factor. The L-factor is used to correct for soil brightness and is adjusted based on vegetation density. Areas with sparse vegetation can produce misleading NDVI values due to the influence of soil. Soil adjusted vegetation. Index corrects this by incorporating the L-factor, reducing the noise caused by the underlying soil, giving more accurate vegetation health readings particularly in arid and semi-arid regions. Let's take it up a notch. When you're dealing with dense vegetation or forest canopies, Enhanced Vegetation Index is your best friend. Fourth, Enhanced Vegetation Index, EVI. Enhanced Vegetation Index equals 2.5 times. Near-infrared minus red, divided by near-infrared plus six times. Red minus 7.5 times blue plus one. The EVI is specifically designed to correct for atmospheric interference and soil noise, making it highly effective in regions with dense biomass like rainforests or farmlands. Enhanced Vegetation Index improves on NDVI by addressing issues with atmospheric conditions and canopy reflectance. This is especially useful in tropical regions with high biomass where standard NDVI may saturate. By correcting for factors like aerosol scattering and canopy structure, Enhanced Vegetation Index provides more accurate readings of dense forest and cropland. Now let's look at an index used in disaster recovery, particularly after wildfires. Fifth, Normalized Burn Ratio, NBR. Normalized Burn Ratio equals near-infrared minus shortwave infrared, divided by near-infrared plus shortwave infrared. The NBR helps detect burn severity by comparing pre-fire and post-fire satellite images. It's also useful for monitoring post-fire vegetation recovery over time. Normalized burn ratio is highly effective in disaster management, specifically in monitoring fire-affected areas. 
It helps in assessing the extent of burns by highlighting areas where the vegetation has been damaged or destroyed. Post-fire, NBR is used to track the recovery of vegetation over time, making it critical for ecological monitoring and restoration efforts. Next up is an index that accounts for atmospheric conditions, especially in hazy or polluted environments. Sixth, Atmospherically Resistant Vegetation Index, ARVI. Atmospherically Resistant Vegetation Index equals near-infrared minus two times red plus blue divided by near-infrared plus two times red plus blue. The Atmospherically Resistant Vegetation Index is designed to reduce atmospheric scattering, such as haze or pollution, and gives you a more accurate measurement of vegetation health, even in compromised conditions. Atmospheric conditions like haze, smoke, or dust can interfere with vegetation analysis. ARVI compensates for this by using the blue band to correct for aerosol scattering in the atmosphere. Let's shift gears from natural environments to man-made structures. Seventh, Normalized Difference Built-Up Index. Formula, Normalized Difference Built-Up Index equals shortwave infrared minus near-infrared divided by shortwave infrared plus near-infrared. The NDBI identifies built-up urban areas by contrasting man-made structures against natural surroundings. It's great for tracking urban sprawl, city planning, or detecting infrastructure growth over time. Normalized Difference Built-Up Index is primarily used for urbanization studies, mapping the extent of built-up areas such as buildings, roads, and infrastructure. By comparing shortwave infrared, SWIR, and near-infrared, NIR, NDBI can easily separate urban areas from natural landscapes, helping in urban planning, development monitoring, and infrastructure analysis. And finally, for those in colder climates or working with snow and ice data, 8. Normalized Difference Snow Index, NDSI. Formula, Normalized Difference Snow Index equals green minus shortwave infrared slash green plus shortwave infrared. The NDSI is perfect for detecting snow cover and differentiating snow from clouds, water, or bare land. It's ideal for snowpack monitoring, climate change studies, or hydrological forecasting. Normalized Different Snow Index is crucial for tracking snow and ice cover, particularly in mountainous or polar regions. It helps differentiate between snow, clouds, and water, providing more accurate assessments of snowpack levels, which are essential for predicting water availability and monitoring climate change impacts. And there you have it, the top eight remote sensing indices you should know. Whether you're working with vegetation, water bodies, urban areas, or snow cover, these indices provide powerful insights for your analysis. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comments. Which index do you use the most in your work? Let me know below and I'll see you in the next video.